So today we have an interesting geometrical problem. So the question is like this way. We have a rectangle. Now inside this rectangle we have a circle so that it is tangent to three sides of the rectangle as you can see in this diagram. Now we draw a straight line segment inside the figure so that one end of this line segment lie on the right side of this rectangle and the same point is the point where the circle is tangent to the right side of this rectangle. So the position of one of the point is fixed. Now this other end of this line segment can lie anywhere on the left side of this rectangle. Okay. Now you can see that the complete straight line is there. Now because of the circumference of this circle, it is getting divided into two parts. So we have given the length to one of the part as A and the length to the other part as B. So now the question over here is to find the area of the rectangle in terms of A and B. So this is unmold and now let us see the solution. How can we solve this problem? Okay, now let us start with the solution. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take the length and breadth of this rectangle as variables. So let the length of this rectangle be of x units and the breadth of this rectangle be of y units. Now look carefully, the question is to find the area of the rectangle in terms of a and b. So now as we have taken the length and breadth of this rectangles as x and y respectively, so ultimately the area of the rectangle is going to be x times y. So now the goal from here is to get the value of x times y in terms of a and b. So for that we will utilize the given data that we have a circle in this rectangle and that is the main thing that is defining the position of this particular line segment. So the first thing that I can notice is that this particular circle is tangent at this, this and these three points. So I will simply draw the radius to all these three points. Now these are the three points where I have drawn the radius and all these three points are tangent points. Now we all know this theorem very well that is the angle form at the point of contact between the radius and the tangent line is always 90 degree. So because of this particular theorem this angle over here would become 90 degree, this angle over there 90 degree and this angle would also be 90 degree. Now this angle and this angle would also be 90 degree because these two angles are ultimately the corner of a rectangle and in rectangle all the corner angles have a value 90 degree. Now we have two quadrilaterals over here, one is over here and the other one is over here. In both of them we can clearly see that three of the angles have a value 90 degree. Therefore by applying the angle sum property the value of the fourth angle would also be 90 degree. Now as we can see this point is common between this and this line segment that is the center of the circle and the addition of this and this angle completely forms 180 degree. This ultimately shows that this particular line is a straight line. In other words, we can say that this point, the center of the circle and this tangent points are collinear points. Okay. Now let me just clear this thing and we'll go forward in the solution. Now what if I take the radius of the circle something like C. So we can see that this particular quadrilateral over here is a square. Why? Because all the four angles are 90 degree and these two adjacent sides are equal and they are ultimately the radius of the circle. Similarly, this quadrilateral is also a square because all the four angles are 90 degree and adjacent sides are equal and they are ultimately the radius of the circle. So in a square, all the four sides are equal. So this length would also become C. This length would also be equals to C. This length would also be equals to C and this length would also be equals to C. Now what I can see is that the length from here to here is equals to C and the length from here to here is again equals to C. So the addition of this both will completely form 2 times c and that is ultimately the breadth of the rectangle and that we have already taken as a variable y. So 2 times c is equals to y solving this equation will get the value of c and that would be y upon 2. So here we have ultimately got the value of radius of the circle in terms of y and that is y upon 2. So I will just clear all these things and keep only one of the radius that is so the radius that we are going to keep in this diagram is this particular one. Okay. Now let me tell you a thing that there are two solutions to this problem. So first of all, let us see the first method. And this is basically the method I first of all did to find the solution. And the second method I got. So the second method I got in this particular manner, like I've done my first method and got the answer to this particular problem. Now when I was checking the answer that whether my answer is correct or not using the first method, the final answer, I came to know about the second method with which they have done in order to get their final answer. So I will be presenting both of the method. But first of all, let us see the first method that I did. 
okay so i have just left this radius over here and that is already meeting at 90 degree to the tangent line because that point is the tangent point clearly mentioned over here now the second thing to be noted in the same statement is that this particular green line is also ending at that particular point take a clear note of this particular thing okay now what i will do is i will draw one more radius in this circle but this time this radius would not be ending to a tangent point instead it will be ending at this particular point where this line segments are getting divided as a and b so i'm just going to draw the radius like this particular manner okay let me do it a bit more clear so now what we can see is that we have a triangle over here let me just redraw this triangle in a bigger size the same triangle i've just redrawn it over here because that triangle is a bit more slimmer so we cannot explain anything inside okay so this length is equals to b and these two are ultimately the radius of the circle and recall that we have just now got the radius of the circle in terms of y and that is y upon 2 so both of this length would have a value y by 2 okay now what i will do is i will simply mark an angle inside this so i will simply take this angle as equals to alpha now look carefully this triangle is an isosceles triangle these two sides are equal so if that angle has a value alpha this angle over here would also have a value alpha and in this diagram this angle would be equals to alpha and this angle would be equals to alpha now look carefully this much angle is equals to alpha this complete angle is 90 degree so the remaining angle would simply be 90 minus alpha i will just explain that thing a bit more later when it is required just now concentrate on this particular triangle in which we have two angles as alpha and alpha and all the three sides are y by 2 y by 2 and b so now what we are going to use is the cosine rule so simply the cosine rule is like this way if we have a triangle in this triangle if we have one of the angle as theta and the three sides are a b and c then the value of cos of theta would be equals to squares of the adjacent added together so adjacent to angle theta are a and b so a square plus b square minus the square of opposite so minus c square upon 2 times the product of adjacent so 2 times a times b this is the value of cos of theta in a triangle with sides a b c using the cosine rule so the same cosine rule we are going to use over here in this triangle so we have the angle alpha so i will take that only so value of cos of alpha in this triangle would be squares of the adjacent added together so adjacent side to this particular angle alpha you can take any of them you will get the same result so i'm just going with this one so the adjacent sides are y by 2 and b therefore y upon 2 the complete square plus b square minus the square of opposite so opposite to angle alpha is again y by 2 so minus y upon 2 the complete square divided by 2 times the product of adjacent so 2 times y by 2 times b now in the numerator we can clearly see that these two will cancel out each other we will finally left with b square upon this thing the b will cancel out the b square so finally the value of cos of alpha will turn out to be b upon now look carefully this 2 and 2 is also going to cancel so b upon y is the final value for cos of alpha this is an important result so let it be equation number one okay the second method we will see later on so let it remove that now let us see this particular thing that i was saying we have to subtract the angle alpha and all that thing so i have to just zoom over there okay so here i have just redrawn everything but in a clear manner now let us mark the angles alpha so the angles alpha were this angle and this angle and they were having a value alpha okay now what i can see is that the angle between this particular white line and this radius that is the pink line is already 90 degree okay now the angle between this pink line and this green line is equals to alpha therefore the remaining angle that is between the green line and this white line would simply be 90 degrees minus the alpha so this angle between the green line and the white line would have a value 90 minus alpha okay now what i will do is i will just construct one more line segment and this will be from this particular point where the line segment is getting started from this point to the right side of this red triangle okay now look carefully that this angle is 90 degree because it is the corner of this rectangle this angle is also 90 degree because it is the corner of the rectangle this is 90 because that we have constructed and therefore by angles and property this is also 90 degree this white line and this white line okay now as all the four angles are 90 degree this particular quadrilateral becomes a rectangle now recall that the length of this biggest rectangle we have already taken it as a variable x hence when this particular quadrilateral becomes rectangle this length would be equals to this length that is already having a value x therefore the length of this white line segment would also be equals to x okay so i'll just remove this thing so keep this thing in mind this complete white line segment is having a length x okay 
Now look carefully in this particular triangle that is ultimately a right angle triangle. Let me just label this thing. So let this point be P, this point be Q and this point be R. So look in this right angle triangle PQR. It is right angle at the point Q. The other angle is having a value 90 minus alpha. So in this triangle, two of the angles are 90 and 90 minus alpha. Therefore, by applying the angle sum property, the value of this third angle would simply be alpha. You can apply the angle sum property. 180 degrees minus 90 plus 90 minus alpha. So this thing will result in alpha and that would ultimately be the third angle. So in this right angle triangle, so in this right angle triangle PQR, we can see that one of the angle is alpha. So from the perspective of this right angle triangle, so let me write it down. So from the perspective of that right angle triangle, that is the triangle PQR, the value of cos of alpha would simply be based upon the hypotenuse. Base is the complete white line that is having a value x upon the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is from the point P to the point R and that is ultimately A plus B. This complete length is ultimately the hypotenuse for this right angle triangle. So ultimately from this right angle triangle PQR we have got the value of cos of alpha and that is x upon a plus b. Now look carefully in the first equation and in the second equation. We can clearly see that both of these equations give us the value for cos of alpha hence we can compare these values. Therefore b upon y that is this thing would be equals to this thing that is going to be x upon a plus b. And if I will simply do the cross multiplication, I will get x times y equals to b times a plus b. And this is the answer that we are ultimately looking for. Look carefully, we have got the value for x times y and that is ultimately representing the area of the rectangle. And the question was to find the area of the rectangle in terms of a and b and that we have done. The area of the rectangle has been found completely in terms of a and b. Okay. Now this was the first method, now let us see the second method and I think the second method is more simpler than this one. This is the first method that I thought so that is necessary to be presented. Now the second method for your convenience. So I am just removing all these things. I will still keep this thing that yes this is the length and this is the breadth that I have taken and area of this rectangle is x times y. That is still required in the second solution also. Okay. And also keep in the mind that yes, the radius of this circle is y upon 2 that we have got. Okay. Now this time what we have to do is simply we have to take the left and the right side of this rectangle and mark their midpoints and draw a straight line to them. Now you can look carefully, the midpoint over here is this thing, the midpoint over there is that thing and it is also passing through the center. So is it correct? It should pass to the center. So the answer is yes. As I have drawn it from this midpoint to that midpoint, so this length would be y upon 2 that is from here to here this length also y by 2 over here this length y by 2 and this length y by 2 now recall that in the beginning we have just drawn the radius to these tangent points and we have got this as a square this as a square and the sides of the squares were ultimately y by 2 so we can see that this line is a straight line that we have also seen so these two lines would be simply straight lines and this point would be again the same point where the green line is meeting the side of this rectangle and the same point where the circle is tangent okay so these things are just according to the symmetry you can just understand i think okay so i've just drawn this straight line from there to there and it is also passing through the center and this angles would also be 90 degree that is nothing to be explained in that and still if you have doubt you can do comment below i will try to resolve that in the comments only because it's as simple as that to be explained in a comment okay now what i will do is i will simply draw one more extra line segment from this particular point to this particular point let me draw it clearly from here to here now look carefully the line segment from here to here is ultimately acting as the diameter for this circle as it is a straight line passing through the center and as per the definition any line that is passing through the center of a circle and it is a straight line it is ultimately the diameter of the circle. So this line is the diameter this means this upper sector and this down sectors are ultimately the semicircles. Now we all know this theorem very well that is the angle subtended in a semicircle is always 90 degree. So here is the diameter and here is the semicircle. And we can clearly see that it is sustaining an angle this one in the semicircle hence this angle would be 90 degree okay now this particular angle i will just take it as something theta okay so here we have this particular right angle triangle now what can you say about the length of this thing so as we have seen the radius of this circle is y by 2 and this line is the diameter for the circle hence it would have a length 2 times y by 2 and that would simply be y so the length from here to here is equals to 
y okay now what can you say about the length from this perpendicular to this perpendicular so as i have told you in the previous solution also it is a rectangle this complete figure is a rectangle this length is already the length of the biggest rectangle that is having a value x therefore this length would also be have a value x now let me just make this diagram clear now look carefully in this right angle triangle in this right angle triangle we first of all have one angle as 90 degree and the other angle we have is theta now look in this right angle triangle again we have a 90 degree and one angle as theta so here we have a pair of triangles in which two of the angles are same this means these two triangles are similar to each other because of angle angle so according to the correspondence if you similar these two triangles and take the ratio of their sides it will come out to be like this way the length from theta to this 90 degree is b divided by the same length in the biggest right angle triangle so theta to the 90 degree gives us the length that is x equals to the length from theta to this third angle in the biggest one is a plus b and in the smaller one we have it as equals to y okay so if i just make these two triangles similar the bigger right angle triangle and the smaller right angle triangle and take the ratio of their sides according to the correspondence this thing will come out like this way now from here i can again take the cross multiplication so i will get the value of x times y equals to b times a plus b and ultimately x times y is representing the area of the rectangle hence we have got the area of the rectangle in terms of a and b and this is the answer that we are looking for so this was the second method and the previous one that i showed you was the first method that was basically what i did when i first saw this problem okay so this was my way to solve this particular problem if you have any other method other than this or else if you have any other question that you think i should try you can do comment below and if you want to share any kind of picture for the solution or problems you can email me or else you can send it to me on my instagram the link is in the description